grateful for that. It's good to see all the different ones out at the work day yesterday. It's, uh, it's actually a lot of fun in, in a way uh, to have, have a work day and get some fellowship on a, a different level. Good to work together. It's good for the young men to see the, see the men working. They, they think all we do is sit around at church, you know. Uh, that was good. It was a good day. We're going to Romans chapter 8 this evening. I've been doing some um, in a series on and off called Key Chapters of the Bible. And I realized that um, what I think are key chapters of the Bible and what you think are key chapters of the Bible might be, uh, might be different, but uh, we're not going to hit a bad one. We know that, all right? Uh, Romans chapter 8, what, what a tremendous portion of Scripture. I, I felt, um, what's the word I want to use here? I felt a bit uh, in, incapable <laughs> in, in approaching this, but we'll, we'll do the best we can. Romans chapter 8, it deals with the Holy Spirit's part in salvation, uh, especially dealing with our daily lives. Uh, some, some would outline it, uh, no condemnation, no obligation, no separation. And uh, we'll look at, at some of that tonight. Let me start by reading Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 4. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. The law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. We'll just stop reading there. We'll, we'll continue with that in just a moment. But he talks here about freedom from judgment, no, no condemnation. I thought about having us sing uh, the song tonight, Free from the Law, but I thought, well, uh, we'll, we'll just get it right from the, from the Scripture here. Now, understand, he's not saying that as Christians, we'll never sin. Uh, that's, not, that's not the point he's making here. He's saying that uh, we're justified. When you, when you trust Christ as Savior, uh, the Bible says we're declared righteous. Earlier he said, therefore being justified by faith, not by works. And boy, he goes into that. Uh, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And then in Romans 6, he talks about, hey, he's not saying that you're free to sin. He's not saying this is a, a blank, blank slate kind of thing. But he's saying we have a new nature. And uh, God has, has taken up residence. And he, he makes basically three statements here in, in this section. Number one, in verse 2 there, the law cannot claim you. Uh, Verse 2 says, The law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Uh, we're no longer under, under the law. We have life in, in the Spirit. Amen. Uh, Romans chapter 7, verse 4, just the beginning, he says, Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ. And he, he uses the illustration there of uh, if, if your spouse dies, you're no longer married to them. Uh, and it's... Uh, you know, it's, a, it's a difficult illustration, but he's saying, uh, ye are become dead to the law by the body of Christ that ye should be married to another. Uh, we're no longer under the law. We're no longer subject to the law in that sense. Uh, we're, uh, we're free from the law. Uh, the law cannot claim you. Secondly, the law cannot condemn you. There in verse 3. What the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, Condemned sin in the flesh. The, the problem with the law is not the law. The problem with the law is us. <laughs> we can't keep it. We just can't. Uh, that's what he's saying there. It was weak through the flesh. Um, you, know, you can have the best laws in the world. There, there's countries that have great laws, and everybody ignores them. <laughs> and they have, they have trouble. Well, we're, this, we're the same with, with the laws. And the Bible is telling us here that Christ took our, our condemnation. The law can't condemn us because Christ already has taken that. At Romans 8, 33, towards the end of the, the chapter, he says, Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Amen. And really, if you want to add there, if someone does try and condemn you, well, hey, listen, I'm not worried about their condemnation. I am worried about God's condemnation. And if I'm justified with God, that's good enough for me. Amen. Um, Christ took our condemnation. He, he paid our penalty. I, I heard of a, of a family where uh, they had a family business, and, and when uh, the father died, 
uh, they, they tried to collect on some, some of the bills that he hadn't, hadn't collected on, but they found that he had written on those bills, forgiven. And when they took it to court, the judge said, listen, these are forgiven. You can't collect on these. Uh, they're forgiven. <laughs> you need to understand that. And, and they, they went away empty-handed. And you know, that's the same with us before the law. We're forgiven. Christ has taken our condemnation. And, and really, we can't please God in our own strength anyway. Uh, religion, outside of Christianity, is built on the idea of pride and, and, and self-works. And the idea that, yeah, I can, I can be good. But God says, that, no, there's none righteous. And we can't do it. The problem with the law is the weakness of our flesh. The third thing he says there in verse 4 is, the law cannot control you, basically. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. We want the Holy Spirit to control us. Uh, the law doesn't produce holiness. Uh, it can produce self-righteousness. Uh, but, uh, for, for instance, Philippians 2.13 says, it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do, of his good pleasure. Now, the law will do some things. It will reveal our sin. It will condemn our sin. Uh, but it doesn't help us with our sin. <laughs> um, we sing that, that song, free from the law, no condemnation. And, and it's true. In Galatians 5, he says in verse 1, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you uh, that if you be circumcised, Christ profit you nothing. Uh, you know, it's not by the law uh, that we have uh, our right relationship with the Lord. It's by faith. And what a blessing that is. Uh, free from the law. Uh, no condemnation in, in the Holy Spirit and, and in God's, uh, God's economy. The second area in Romans chapter 8 there, and starting in verse 5, is no obligation. What he's talking about here is no obligation to our flesh. A lot of what we do is motivated by how we feel about things. Uh, let me read on here, Romans 8, starting in verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Well, you couldn't get much more definite than that, could you? Very specific. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Amen. For if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. We'll just stop reading there. We'll continue in a moment. But he's talking about our obligation. Our obligation is not to our flesh. It's to the spirit. It's to the Lord. Uh, it's, it's not to the old nature, it's to the new nature. And uh, like I said, he's very specific here. Uh, the carnal mind is enmity against God. You, you know, there's, there's basically three, you might say, levels of living that he talks about in, in this passage. The first is there at the end of verse 9. If any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. I start there because that's the lowest level. That's the common denominator for all of us when we're born. Uh, we don't have the Spirit of Christ. Uh, we're not born saved. Uh, we're born lost. Uh, this is a lost person. If, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. He makes it very specific, doesn't he? He says, if, you, if you have, uh, you're not in the flesh but in the Spirit, but if the Spirit of God dwell in you, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. A person who doesn't have the Holy Spirit is not saved. That's, that, that's what salvation is. In, in our New Testament uh, day. And uh, when a person lives at this level, in verse 5 he says they live uh, in the flesh. They that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, not the spirit. In verse 6 he says they're, they're spiritually dead. For to be carnally minded is death. They're not alive spiritually. 
Uh, in verse 7, he says they're at war with God. The carnal mind is enmity against God. Yeah, I talk to people a lot who claim to be Christians, but these are characteristics that they have. Uh, you know, they're motivated by the flesh. They don't seem to have any uh, relationship with God, and they don't want God telling them what to do. <laughs> um, they're not at peace with God. You know, like we saw in Romans 5.1, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God. You know, we've surrendered and said, Lord, <laughs> help me. Uh, well, in verse 8, uh, he says, this kind of person is pleasing self. They that are in the flesh cannot please God. Uh, they're not trying to please God. They're trying to please self. Uh, sometimes this is uh, in their religion. These can be very religious people, but they're not in it because of faith in God's word. That's right. They're in it because of how they want to live. You know, you know, some people, have you ever met somebody who's just kind of spiritual in their personality? I've met people like that. They're just kind of, they're just kind of spiritual, you know? It doesn't make them saved. Uh, and sometimes it's kind of hard to get that kind of person lost. You know, it's for them to see, yeah, I'm a sinner before God and need to be saved. But it's true. This is the lowest level of, of living. Uh, there's people who, who would say they're serving the Lord. But, you know, in Matthew, Jesus said there's going to be people who stand before him. And, you know, they say, well, Lord, we did this and we did that. And he's going to say, depart from me. I, I never knew you. We need to be careful that we're not in this to please self, but uh, in it for the Lord. Now, let me say this. If you're at war with God, you are doomed to defeat. <laughs> war with God is not a good option. Um, you need to have peace with God, and that only comes when you, when you trust Him. The, the second level is also in verse 9. You're not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be, that the Spirit of God dwell in you. That's just basic Christianity. When you get saved, when you ask the Lord to save you, the Bible says the Holy Spirit takes up residence in you. God does. Yeah, we don't believe in three gods. We just believe in one God. Uh, but we talk about God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. He's a triune being. And we're talking here about salvation. When you get saved, you have the Spirit's witness. Uh, we haven't read it yet, but verse 16, he says, The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Uh, verse 14, As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And God's Holy Spirit. God is a real person. Amen. And he, he, when you have a relationship with Him, it, it makes a difference. Uh, when, you, when he's part of your life. In fact, the, body, the Bible says that our body becomes his temple. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you're not your own, for you're bought with a price. Uh, we have the Spirit's witness. Uh, we have spiritual life. Verse 10, if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. You'll, you'll struggle. Your body will want to do things and uh, you'll have to overrule. Uh, but the Bible then even goes on and says in verse 11, one day God will even change your body. Quicken your mortal body by the, his spirit that, that dwelleth in you. Uh, when we get saved, when a person becomes a Christian, there's a lot of things that God does for us automatically. Yeah, his Holy Spirit takes up residence. Uh, he, he declares us Righteous. That's not something we do, you know, there's no formula or some magic incantation that we say or something. Uh, when you trust Christ, there's, there's just things one after the other. And, and part of the excite, exciting part of being a new Christian is discovering all the things you have, <laughs> all the treasures that, that are there. Uh, you know, we're right before God. And what a, what a difference this is to the lowest level. You know, in, instead of being in the flesh, in the spirit. Instead of being spiritually dead, spiritually alive. Instead of at war with God, at peace with God. You know, what a blessing that is. Instead of living to please self, living to please God. And this is just basic Christianity. In Philippians, he says, God has begun a good work in you. And that's what happens when you get saved. God begins a work. Getting saved is not the end. That's the beginning. It's the new birth. Well, then the, the third level, and I, I don't think I'm taking too much license by using this term. The, the third level is when the Spirit has you. The lowest level is you don't have the Holy Spirit. Salvation, then, is the next level. You, you, you receive the Holy Spirit. You're saved. But then, as you grow and have victory in your Christian life, the Spirit has you. You know, it's not just um, 
a little kid relationship anymore. It, it becomes a real relationship, an adult relationship. Let me read on, uh, starting again in verse 12. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. But we have not received the spirit of bondage, again, to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Just stop reading there. We're talking about the victorious Christian life. You know, just growing in the Lord. And, and things change as your relationship deepens with Christ. Uh, you live for Christ because, uh, like the Bible says here in Romans 8, you have the spirit of life. I use that expression in, in verse 2. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and, and death. Uh, later on in verse 10, if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. We have the spirit of life. And, and the Holy Spirit is, is doing a work uh, in our hearts and, and lives. Like he says in Galatians 2.20, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. The Spirit of life. You live for Christ. Secondly, you die to sin. In uh, verses 13 and 14, it doesn't use this expression, uh, but you have the, the Spirit of death, you might say. Uh, the Spirit of God. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. As God leads you, and as you yield to God's Holy Spirit, he uses the expression there in verse 13, through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body. You were putting to death the things of the flesh. We're getting to the point where we say, oh, I don't have to do what the flesh tells me to do anymore. It's kind of like your old boss. You ever had a boss where they were kind of scary, and boy, you had to do what they, they told you? And now you don't work for them anymore, but you meet them. And they tell you to do something. Listen, you don't have to do it anymore. <laughs> That's the way it is with the flesh. Yeah? And the Bible uses the expression, the illustration, that because we died, yeah, we are totally set free. I mean, it's not that we just don't work for them anymore. We died. We're, we're out of there. <laughs> uh, so we, are, we, we, we die to sin. Uh, he helps us to put to death the deeds of the body. In Romans 6, verse 6, Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, then henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. That's what we're talking about. Sin is no longer the boss. I love how he puts it in Romans 6, 11 and following. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. See, sin doesn't have to be king anymore. It's not king anymore when you get saved. They, Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness, but yield yourselves unto God. And so when the Spirit has you, you live for Christ. You die to sin. And thirdly, you're secure in Christ. In verse 15, he uses the term the spirit of adoption. You have received the spirit of adoption. We have security in the Lord. We're, we are a child of God. Now that term, I'm told, is not like taking an orphan. It's actually a, a person who is a child. When they reach maturity, uh, the, the Romans would adopt their own son. And what it, what it was saying was they were showing their, uh, their heritage, uh, their legal right uh, to all that, that is, is theirs. And you know, as Christians, uh, we can't work for this relationship. You know, there's nothing you can do to make yourself a child of God. It's not by works of righteousness which we've done. God does it. We, we receive Him. And, and uh, uh, it, it's, a, it's a relationship that He is the, is the key in. Uh, as God's children, uh, we walk with Him. Verse 14, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, willingly led. Uh, we've got young, young kids in, in the home now, and you know, there's a lot of times when, pick up, pick up. <laughs> you know, they want, they want to, to be led, they want to be, to be held, and so on. Well, that's, that's 
our right with the Lord because he's our, our Heavenly Father. Uh, we, we speak with the Lord. In verse 15, he says, we cry, Abba, Father. I don't know what, what different homes have different expressions. You know, Papa, Daddy. Uh, you, you ever been in the, in the shops and some kid is yelling, Mom? Well, there's a hundred moms there. But there's a mom who that, that, that home's in. Oh, that's, yeah, because there's a relationship. Now, all the moms turn, but then one of them says, oh, yeah, that's, that's mine. <laughs> and we have that relationship uh, with the Lord. We commune with him, verse 16. Uh, the Spirit bears witness with our spirit. Uh, we claim our inheritance, verse 17. If children, then heirs. Now, I remember growing up, I, I never worried about getting in my parents' car or putting on the clothes that my parents bought me, or living in the house that they owned. I mean, I was just a kid. I didn't know, but I was part of the family. And as part of the family, it was my house, and my car, and my clothes. And, <laughs> you know, I didn't pay for it. I didn't, I didn't work for it. God, my, my family provided. And, and that's the way our relationship is with the Lord. You know, we're heirs, joint heirs with Christ. I mean, how, how much better can you get than that? Uh, Ephesians chapter uh, 1 and, and verses 5 and 6. He says, Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Yeah, what a blessing. Uh, freedom from defeat. No obligation to the flesh. Uh, we have this relationship uh, with our Lord. We see the spirit of life empowers us. The spirit of God enables us. The spirit of, of, of adoption enriches us and leads us. And we've looked at three different levels of living. Not having the Holy Spirit. Having the Holy Spirit, being saved. But then going on to the spirit having you. you know, Just being really in tune with, with what God is, is doing in your life. And, and I would have you ask you to think about that. What, what level are you at? Do you have the Holy Spirit? Are you saved? Uh, as a Christian, are you listening to what the Holy Spirit is, is doing? Uh, the way you listen mainly is through God's Word. Amen. You know, there's a, a difference between those who have the Holy Spirit and those who don't. Uh, you can be as religious as you want, but unless you have the Holy Spirit, uh, you're going to be different than a person who's saved. Jesus, in John chapter 10, said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. He uses the illustration of sheep and a shepherd. Uh, the sheep know his voice. They hear him. They follow him. Uh, I've been told, I've not seen it myself, but uh, in the Middle East they're talking about how uh, two shepherds would come, each with a flock, and uh, the shepherds would meet and they would talk, and the sheep would kind of mingle, and, and then the shepherds would go on, and, and the sheep would just kind of walk through each other, and one group would follow their shepherd, and the other group would follow the other shepherd. They knew their shepherd. They knew who they were with. Uh, that's what he's talking about. Uh, having the Holy Spirit means you have a relationship with God. You know the Lord. Um, he goes on in that passage and talks about, I give unto them eternal life. They shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. God has made a commitment to his sheep. Uh, and yet there's, there's people who... Even religious people, but they don't have the Holy Spirit. They don't belong to God. They've never been saved. They don't want to follow Him. They don't want to listen to Him. They don't want to obey what He says. And they don't identify with and love the sheep. They're not part of the, of the flock. In 1 John, turn, turn there if you would. And I won't, take, I won't preach another sermon, but 1 John gives us some characteristics of a child of God. Yeah, the difference between having the Holy Spirit and not having the Holy Spirit is the difference between being saved and not being saved. Being born again and not being born again. This is very important. Uh, John identifies some characteristics of, of God's children. And the basic is that they walk in the light. Uh, 1 John 1, verses 6 and 7. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanseth us from all sin. 
Having the Holy Spirit means you have a relationship with God. You're, you're walking in the light. Um, you can say as much as you want, but if you're walking in darkness, we, you can say you have fellowship and you walk in darkness. You know, the Bible says that this is God's light. His word is a light under our feet and a lamp under our path. He's the light. Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. His word, uh, Jesus the, the Savior. Uh, they walk in the light. They have a relationship with God through Jesus. Uh, God's children have characteristics. Was it last year? A couple, a couple years ago, maybe. Um, the Bramblets got together. Now, if you were to see a bunch of Bramblets, you'd say, oh, those look and act like Bramblets. <laughs> and you might not like all the characteristics of the Bramblets, but you'd, you'd see them if you're, you hung around a, a group of us for a while. Well, it's, it's the same with Christians. There's just some things that are true about people who are saved, people who have the Holy Spirit, because they begin, uh, they have that uh, family characteristics uh, that come from God. Yeah, he gives a couple here, and I'll, I'll just, we'll just look at them briefly. 1 John chapter 2 uh, and verse 3. Hereby we do know that we know him. Okay, he's saying, how can we know if we keep his commandments? There's going to be a desire to want to live for the Lord, to hear him and, and to obey him. Like Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice, and they know me, and they follow me. Uh, uh, they're going to want to keep his commandments. In chapter 3, verse 14, we know that we've passed from death unto life because, well, what's this? We love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. There's a relationship with God's other people. You know, with others who have the Holy Spirit. Uh, with Christians. You know, we've experienced this. We've gone to churches where we couldn't even speak the language. <laughs> but you, the, you have a, I don't know, you just have a, a relationship, a oneness with, uh, with people. We've had people where we've never met them before. And we show up at church, and, and man, all of a sudden, you know, they, they invite us to stay at their home. We were in New York or somewhere, and, and we just popped into this church, and people said, listen, we got a spare room. Come stay with us. I always, I always make sure people ask me two or three times before I do anything like that. But they asked several times. We said, okay, we're coming. And uh, then they wanted to loan us their car, and I, we said, no, no. He said, well, I want to know why not. <laughs> yeah, there's a relationship there, uh, because... We both know the Lord. Uh, chapter 3, verse 24, he says, He that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby know, uh, I'm sorry, hereby we know that he abideth in us. Why? By the Spirit which he hath given us. We're, we're led by the Holy Spirit. And, and it's, th these are just characteristics of, of a Christian. These are not things we do in order to be saved. You know, these are not things we say, Oh, I better do this and that will make me saved. No, when you trust Christ, God begins to work in you. It is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. And the family characteristics start coming out. You know, the way they say things. Have you ever heard some kid say something? You say, oh, that's their dad saying that. I hear myself saying things. I think, that's my dad saying that. <laughs> I hear my grandkids sometimes saying things. That's just the way it works in a family. And when you're part of the family of God, there's going to be evidence of it. Romans 8.1 says, There's therefore now no condemnation. The next words are, To them which are in Christ Jesus. And that's the key. You see, the Bible says we're all born condemned. When Jesus was talking about salvation, he, he said he didn't come to condemn the world. He said we were condemned already. He came to save the world. And whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. We all stood condemned before God. Every one of us. But in Christ, he says, there's, there's therefore now no condemnation. That's so important. Listen, you can deny the condemnation, but if, if you've never trusted Christ, you stand, you'll stand before God condemned. Are you in Christ? That's, that's the most important thing. Uh, three levels of living. Those who don't have the Holy Spirit. Those who have the Holy Spirit because they're saved. And then those who've who are living the victorious Christian life, those who, who are, are growing in, in the Lord. Uh, if you're in Christ, the Bible says you stand before God redeemed. 
What a blessing. That's what the word justified uh, has to do with. We're declared righteous. No condemnation. Uh, if you're in Christ, you, you've been set free from the slavery to sin. There's no obligation to the flesh anymore. What a blessing that is. If you're not in Christ, listen, the Bible says uh, you need Jesus Christ. He's the only way of salvation. And the way to find him, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It's not through a church. It's not through good deeds. You know, it's not through some experience. It's through faith in God, through faith in the gospel, that Jesus died and was buried and rose again. Uh, let me encourage you, make sure that you've, you've moved to that second level. We're, we're born condemned. We need Christ. Uh, we need the Lord Jesus Christ. And he says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can be saved today if, if you've never trusted Christ. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Maybe the Lord is speaking to your heart. I, I don't know. Um, Maybe you need to take care of some business with him tonight. Father, thank you so much for your word. Lord, we don't understand everything that you've, you've said, but Father, it's a pretty simple message tonight. Help us to know you. I pray if there are those here tonight who are not saved, that your Holy Spirit would help them. Help them not to be offended, but Lord, to be moved to repentance. Lord, help us as Christians to grasp these truths that we're, uh, we're not under obligation to the old way of life. And, and Lord, that we don't have to fear, but that we can uh, live in faith. Father, I pray that your, your will would be done tonight. And pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'd like us to take our songbooks and go to page 534. It's the song, Cleanse Me. Search me, O God, and know my heart. It's from uh, Psalm 139 there. But page, what did I say, 534. Azrael, if you'll come and lead us in that. Maybe you need to come and pray. If you'd like counsel with someone, I'd be happy to, to do that. Let's, let's stand together as we sing. I will start the work in me. Thy word declares, Thou wilt supply our need. For blessing now, O Lord, I have.
Thank you for your attention tonight. It's good to have several folks visiting. Uh, good to have the Kilmers with us. I'll get you to close in prayer, if, if you would, please. Father, well, thank you so much for saving us. You're to help us. We need your help. Mm. Face, we pray to help us to for you. Challenges come, we look to you, honor you, or maybe tell you someone's struggling with a certain issue. Strengthen them to look to you and walk with you and help them. Thank you for this ministry. Continue to help this these folks here, this church, light for you in this area. Amen.